today I want to share with you one of those studies that God gave me for me. But it is also for me to share with anyone facing the same challenges, obstacles, trials, and tribulations in their life. So, let's proceed. In life, we often face challenges, obstacles, events, trials, tribulations, temptations, troubles, and circumstances to which bring with them confusion and confoundedness to our natural senses. All understanding we gain from the world around us is perceived through our physical senses. All of our natural knowledge derives from our five senses. By touch, we feel and discern things around us to be tangible. By seeing, we discern those things we perceive to be real. By taste and smell, the body reacts and formulates likes, dislikes, and appetites. Our sense of hearing can be said to be more noble than our other base senses, in that with hearing, we engage our mind to formulate thoughts, opinions, feelings, and emotions. With hearing, we have to make a determination in ourselves if what we heard is true or not. Hearing engages our thoughtfulness, our imagination. It engages our discernment and causes in us action and reaction. You can hear a loud noise even distances away, such as thunder, and become frightened. We can hear a whisper, a song, a melody, and be set at ease. Hearing can bring comfort or fear, encouragement or discouragement, joy or sadness. We make judgments and choices by what we hear. Hearing brings a wide sphere of action. Our basic five senses provide us with nothing that goes beyond the mere physical realm. Our senses furnish us with no information at all concerning the invisible or spiritual world. But our wonderful wise creator instilled in each of us an innate ability to go beyond the basic five senses. He has appointed in each of us the ability to have faith. Faith takes us where senses don't go. Faith begins where our senses end. Senses are an evidence of things that are seen, the visible, the material world. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, the invisible world. What's not seen by the naked eye or comprehended by our senses. We all have this intangible innate ability to have faith. Each and every day, we all exhibit faith in the invisible world. If you believe in germs, you have faith in the invisible, knowing you have never seen a germ with your naked eye. You believe what you were told and taught. If you watch TV, you have faith that there are invisible TV waves in the air being received by your television, knowing you have never seen a television wave with your naked eye. We all believe in some form or another about something we have been taught and told, which we never see, witnessed, or experienced. All of these things are but an expression of our innate ability to have faith in the invisible. However, to have faith and have faith in God are two different things. The Word of God tells us not only is faith the substance of things hoped for, but it is the evidence of things unseen. It also tells us, through faith we understand, or the word naeo, meaning to perceive or realize, to apply mental effort needed to reach a bottom line conclusion, that the worlds were framed by what? The word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Most people believe the world they live in they see, touch, interact with was created by God, who is invisible to us. You can ask almost anyone on the street and they will tell you they believe in God and that God created the world and the people in it. Yet many, most, don't believe in what he said, that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Did you get that? We'll come back to this. See, having faith in God is quite different from just having faith there is a God. What am I talking about? To truly believe in God is to believe in what he told us, not just that he exists. Let me say it another way. To believe there is a God is but the ability 
to have faith in something greater than yourself. But to believe in God is to believe in his truth. To have faith in God brings us to the formulated conclusion that what God has spoken is true and evident. By his word have all things been framed and made that are evident and true. So for me to have faith in God is to take God at his word. When I was young, we had this saying, word is bond, meaning you can take me at my word. Yet how many of us live before God that his word is bond? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 tells us, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now this scripture is referencing the Israelites who failed to trust what God told them in the wilderness. God had promised them that he would care for them and give them the victory, but they chose not to believe or trust what he told them. To them, God's word was not bond. They heard what he said, but they did not trust what he told them. Make no mistake, the Israelites believed there was a God, and even that God was the God of all gods, the creator of all things, but they did not choose to believe what he told them. You see, it's easy to say I have faith in God, but when circumstances are set before my senses, do I choose to stand by what the Lord God Almighty has told me or allow myself to be swayed by my other senses? I must make a choice, believe what God said or believe my senses. There is no middle ground. There is the fence and everything on that side or everything on this side. Many of us tend to believe we can say we have faith and even believe it, but faith in the Lord is an absolute choice to believe what he said or don't. There is no mostly, somewhat, part way, or kind of. It's all or not. Life itself will always challenge our faith in the Lord, and in each challenge, the circumstances of life will call to us with confusion, doubt, to waver, or be double-minded. It's one thing to say it, it's another to believe it. It's altogether different to live it. Faith, it's more than just a word. Look at the Israelites who had firsthand witnessed the miracles of God with all their senses in delivering them from the hand of their oppressors, then being led by God by their senses with a cloud in the day and a pillar of fire by night, Yet when they were camped by the sea and looked up and saw the Egyptians coming to their senses, they made a choice to believe their senses over the words of the Almighty God. In choosing their senses over the word of God, they went into confusion and confoundedness and began murmuring against God and Moses, even wanting to return to Egypt and go back to being slaves. Look at Peter. He proclaimed that he would go to jail and even died for Jesus. Yet when faced with the circumstances of his senses of pride and fear, he faltered and denied the Lord three times. Between the Israelites and Peter, there are tens of thousands of testimonies of people proclaiming faith only to allow what they see and feel and the circumstances of their life to win out, bringing them to confusion, confoundedness, doubt, and double-mindedness over what the Lord God Almighty has said. Do you find yourself in similar circumstances when facing trials and tribulations? I know I have. Many of times God brings circumstances into our lives to test us, to try us, to see if what we have heard from Him, we will believe. Faith is like a cake. You can have all the ingredients, even mix them all together, but until it's placed in the fire and caused to rise, it's not a cake. It's just cake mix. A cake is only a cake after it comes out of the fire. Let's again look at the Israelites, who after seeing God perform many miracles for their deliverance from bondage, yet and still, they allowed their circumstances to cause them to be confounded, confused, and doubt God. Exodus chapter 14 verses 1 through 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to encamp near Fiahiroth between Migdol and the sea, 
They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite Beelzephon. Pharaoh would think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. The Lord brought them to a place where they would be hemmed in on both sides, facing the circumstances of what they see and feel. Here comes Pharaoh and his army, and on the other side is the sea. We have nowhere to go. On the other hand, they have the Lord God Almighty on their side, who promised them deliverance from the Egyptians, a choice. A choice to believe what God Almighty told them or believe what the circumstances were before them. They could have said, Oh, Pharaoh, you made a big mistake. You should have stayed in Egypt instead of coming out after us. you already seen what God can do. You're in big trouble now. Instead, they chose to believe their circumstances, their physical senses. Verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Even though the Israelites had witnessed the mighty hand of God perform many miracles in their midst, they still chose the sight of their circumstances over the promises of God. You know, the funny thing is, we read this story and want to talk about the Israelites. But truth is, many of us do the same thing. I know I'm guilty of that. Peter was guilty of that, and he did the same thing. We know God is in control, able to do all things. But when faced with the circumstances of our senses, we panic, get confused, and give the circumstances more power in our lives than God. Come on now, let's be real with ourselves. This is but double-mindedness and doubt. Many of us want to believe we're not being double-minded or doubting, but truth is we are. Just because you say you have faith in God doesn't make it faith in God. In many cases, it's but having faith in our faith that we have faith in God. Let me put it to you like this. Peter believed he had faith in the Lord. He even said he would go to jail for him and die for him. But Jesus wanted Peter to learn something about his proclaiming to have faith. He replied to Peter, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. And I have prayed that your faith fail not. And when you come through it, strengthen your breathing. Jesus was basically saying to Peter, you're just proclaiming to have faith, but your faith is only in your faith that you have faith. But I pray that your faith fails not. Not only are you not willing to go to jail for me or die for me, you're not even going to be willing to stand up for me when circumstances confront you. You're going to fold in the faces of the circumstances. Now, what does Jesus mean that he prayed for Peter that his faith fails not? when he knew that Peter's faith would fail him. What Jesus is telling Peter is that through this trial, testing, proving ground, Peter would come to learn that his faith needs to be placed in God and not in his faith that he had faith. Peter would come to realize that his proclaiming to have faith in the Lord was nothing more than his belief in himself to have faith but that his faith was not in the Lord God Almighty. For example, there was this man who was known in the community for walking across a tightrope between mountains, thousands of feet above the ground. One day he invites the community out to watch him walk across the mountains on a tightrope. Before he begins, he asks the people, how many of you believe I will walk across this tightrope to the other side? They all answer, yes, we believe. He then says, everyone who believes I can walk across this type rope to the other side, let me carry you across to the other side. Suddenly, no one believed in the man's ability to safely carry them across the type rope to the other side. It's one thing to say it. It's another to believe it. It's altogether different to live it. After Peter had come through his trial, he would come to realize what Jesus had earlier told him. If you have faith as big as a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain be you removed 
and cast into the sea, and it will obey you. It is not the proclaiming to have faith, but where that faith is directed, no matter how small it is, meaning faith in God is not in what you believe, but trusting in what God told you. Peter will come to understand this. It is not proclaiming to have faith in your faith that you have faith, but it is where you put your faith. And the next time Peter was confronted with similar circumstances, his faith was in God. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. When I have faith in God, I believe what he said. There is no confusion. There is no waver. There is no double-minded thinking. There is but a choice made, and I stand on that choice waiting upon the Lord. I'm not moved by what I see or what confronts me. I stand to the promises God has spoken in his revealed word to my life. That's a choice, people. A choice. If you have to think about it, rethink it, analyze it, question it, then you are not taking God at his word. And anytime we're not taking God at his word, we're wavering, being double-minded, doubting. There is no in-between. You may say, what if I don't know God's will for my life or particular circumstances? That's a fair question, and that's okay. But go find out, because anything and everything you can face in this life is in God's word. Find it and stand on it. Believe what God said, not what you think or feel. Having faith in God is more than just proclaiming it. Yet, when circumstances confront you, you panic, you get confused, and you begin letting the philosophies of this world, yourself and your friends, and even other church members, dictate to you how you should deal with the circumstances, issues, or problems while telling yourself you're trusting God. Man, if you don't stop it, Brother Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 6.11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Paul commands Timothy and us to not only follow after, aim at, or pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, etc., but to fight the good fight of faith. He tells us having faith in God is a fight. Our faith in God is challenged and threatened daily by our circumstances that only brings doubt and unbelief to our senses. Daily, we must fight to maintain our faith in God, His promises, His words spoken to us. Fighting the good fight of faith is to fight through our present circumstances by looking beyond them to believing in God, what He said, trusting His promises against the forces of our circumstances, doubt and unbelief. The fight of faith is the struggle to trust God with our burdens of life. It's a fight for freedom from the worry and anxiety the world brings us, exchanging them for belief, I can cast all my cares upon the Lord. It's a fight to maintain hope in what the Lord said and not what I'm faced with. I fight to believe I can trust in his word and not what I see, feel, or what the world says. It's the fight against all that threatens me with doubt and unbelief about God's promises. Faith is a daily fight to choose what God says over all else. It truly is the fight between the circumstances of life and our faith in God's word. I will conclude with what Jesus told Peter in Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 through 23, after Peter saw the withered fig tree, Jesus cursed. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto him, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. For those of you who don't realize Jesus speaking of a mountain is not literal but in reference to mountains in our lives, problems, issues, those things that seem to overcome us, those things that seem insurmountable to our lives. Notice what Jesus says, have faith in God and not doubt. You must not only believe God is able, but without doubting, 
believe he is willing to fulfill his promises to your life. Let that marinate. May God bless and keep you, my friends, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Fellowship in the Word. If you've been blessed by this video, please click the subscribe button and the bell to receive notification of when we upload new videos. Thank you and God bless you.